Hello and welcome to this video in which we describe the central limit theorem, explain a little bit about what it means, and give an example of the types of computations that you typically perform in order to apply it. One way to deal with variability is to average observations. So for example in hypothesis testing we will often use the average of a set of observations and compare this average to a threshold. Mathematically, we have a situation that looks like this. We have an average, which we denote as x-bar, which by definition is 1 over n, where n is the number of elements that we're averaging, times the sum of these elements. And typically, we'll assume that these xi's are independent of each other, and that they are random variables with a mean which will denote mu and a variance which will denote sigma squared. And so the question that we're often faced with, particularly in hypothesis testing, is what's the probability that our average is less than or equal to some value which we can call x0? Now our average will be a random value because each of these xi's are random variables. And so I'm summing up a whole bunch of random variables, each of which may take a different value. That gives me the average, and again the average then is a random variable because it can take different values. The central limit theorem comes to our rescue in the following sense. It turns out that this average is approximately normal, and what we mean by that, if n is really big, then the distribution of x bar becomes more and more like the distribution of a normal random variable. The mean of x bar is just the mean of the random variables, and the variance of x bar is the variance of an individual random variable divided by n, where again sigma squared is the variance of each of the individual random variables. So let's do an example of the type of computation that you typically do in the central limit theorem. So let's suppose that each of my xi's have a mean of 0.5 and a variance of 0.1. And let's suppose that I have eight of these random variables that I'm going to average. So x bar is going to be 1 over 8 times the sum i going from 1 to 8 of xi. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to take 8 different observations, I'll add them together, divide by 8, and that gives me the average value of the observation. And suppose I want to know what's the probability that x bar is less than 0.75. And again, this sort of question is asked uh, quite often as we do statistical hypothesis testing. What do I know about x bar? I know from the central limit theorem that x bar is approximately normal. I will treat it as a normal random variable to compute this probability. I know that the mean of x bar is going to be the mean of each of my xi's, which in this case is 0 0.5. I know that the variance of x bar is going to be the variance of my xi's, which is 0 0.1 divided by 8, which tells me that the standard deviation of my x bar is going to be the square root of this value, which turns out to be 0 0.1118. So to find this probability, one way to do this would be to just plug this in for the mean this in for the standard deviation into a function that computes the probability of an arbitrary normal random variable. But typically what you'll see done now is you'll normalize x bar as follows. You'll say the probability of z, where z is a normalized version of x bar, being less than or equal to 0.75 minus mu of x bar 0 0.5 over the standard deviation of x bar, which in this case is 0 0.01118. And when I calculate this, I get that that value is 2.2361. 
and I can find this probability now using a spreadsheet as follows. I use the formula equals norm s dist of 2.2361. So what I've just computed is this probability is 0 0.9873. So, in summary, we've described the central limit theorem, which again is that the average, something like this, of a set of random variables is approximately normal. It has a mean that is the same as the mean of the elements that are being averaged. It has a variance, which is the variance of each of the elements divided by the number of elements. And then I can find probabilities associated with x-bar by normalizing things as we have in the past and using either a spreadsheet or a table or Minitab or something like that to compute the probability. So that concludes this video and I hope you found it useful.